Sangyong's much improved Corando is still the only real choice if you're looking for something in the crossover or small SUV class offering proper diesel towing power and decent off-roading prowess for less than £20,000. This smarter, further revised version looks even better value against now more expensive rivals, costing around 20% less but offering considerably more in terms of capability. Plus, there's still that class-leading limitless five-year warranty. It all makes this car well worth a look. Think of a Korean car maker, and it's a reasonable bet that you won't be thinking about this one, which must be frustrating for Sanyong since the company is actually one of the longest established of all the Asian brands. Recent years have seen this manufacturer re-establishing itself in Europe, armed with investment from Indian owners Mahindra, seeking to build on a heritage that goes all the way back to 1954. Since 1983, one of this maker's most important models has been badged Corando. It still is. Which makes this one of the longest serving models in its segment. Despite that, it's a car with a badge and a design that still has little recognition across the market sector in which it must compete, that for lifestyle orientated small SUVs. We're talking about the budget end of this sector, of course, so cars like Kia Sportage and Hyundai's Tucson rather than Toyota RAV4s or Honda CRVs, and five seat only models, since that's what this is. Sanyong also believes the Corando may appeal to crossover buyers, people looking at even less capable cars in this class, like Nissan's Qashqai or Renault's Kajar. With its smart Tivoli model, the brand has already established itself as a contender amongst smaller vehicles in this segment. Customers looking at that car but wanting something a little larger and more capable might well, the company thinks, be tempted to end up behind the wheel of this one. Either way, the Corando certainly seems to offer an awful lot for the money, and always has, ever since it first arrived here back in 2011, complete with slick Italian Giugiaro styling and a powerful purpose-designed two-litre diesel engine. This was the first Sanyong design to swap a heavy-duty ladder frame chassis for more car-like monocoque underpinnings in pursuit of a sensible school-run ride and more rewarding handling all along with a high specification and pricing that made opposition models look needlessly expensive. Since then, virtually every key aspect of this model's design has been significantly enhanced. The engine, updated to 2.2 litre Euro 6 status for the 2016 model year, and the styling, substantially revised in the spring of 2017. The result is the rejuvenated Corando that we're going to look at here. Around a third of all Corando buyers are serious towers, members of organisations like the Caravan Club, and you can certainly see why customers of that sort would be attracted to this car. Instead of the feeble 1.5 or 1.7 litre diesel engine you'd usually get from an SUV at this price point, this Sanyong charges less, yet provides a much lustier D22T 2.2 litre unit with nearly twice as much pulling power. The engine, developed in-house by the Korean maker, develops a pokey 178 PS. This, remember, in a segment where every other sub £20,000 contender offers less than 120 PS. There's a slight running cost penalty to pay in exchange for this kind of grunt, of course, but in return, you get the kind of performance and pulling power that you'd otherwise have to find around £25,000 for in this class of car. Sounds tempting, doesn't it? You can get this surprisingly effective power plant mated to either two or four wheel drive, but either way you're looking at a car that'll be significantly quicker than just about all its competitors. 60 achievable from rest in 9.9 .9 seconds on the way to a theoretical maximum of 115 miles an hour. Now to put this showing into perspective, that's about 4 seconds and 6 miles an hour quicker than the kind of 1.7 litre CRDI diesel Kia Sportage or Hyundai Tucson you'd pay significantly more for. The only real downside lies with refinement. 
Despite recent efforts to improve this, the Corando still remains a little noisier than its rivals under hard acceleration. In normal day-to-day -day use though, most will probably find the car quite acceptable in this respect. As we've suggested, you'll really feel the advantages of this torquier engine in terms of pulling power, especially if you're towing. This car has a massive 400 newton meters of torque, which means that it can tug two tons. To give you some perspective, the 1.7 litre Kia and Hyundai rival models I've just mentioned can manage just 1.4 tons. Nor would you do much better with a comparable 1.5 litre diesel Nissan Qashqai or Renault Kajar, where the limit would be 1.5 tons. Either way, there's quite a difference. The Sangyong also has a decently capable uh, 80 kilogram tow bar limit. It is, in short, the most powerful towing car in its class. Not surprisingly then, uh, the Caravan Club has consistently voted it a tow car of the year class winner. They reckon there's nothing else in this segment that's a better load lugger. That'll sell this car to many potential buyers right off the bat, whatever its other attractions. These people will probably also want the torque on demand 4x4 system that's fitted to the all wheel drive variant that we're trying here. It's one of those setups that's able to constantly shunt torque around to the wheel that has most grip, so the power is always going to be used efficiently. Now, unlike some of its rivals, this particular system also has a lock mode selectable should you be on very loose or slippery surfaces and find yourself with this Sanyong somewhere where you probably shouldn't have ventured in the first place. Here, drive is allocated equally between front and rear wheels to give you the best possible chance of extricating yourself. Not that this should suggest a Corando to be a really serious off-road mud plugger. It isn't. Many previous Sanyo models have been, but to facilitate that, they've needed to use tough ladder frame chassis setups. That would have got this Corando precisely nowhere in tarmac comparisons with Qashqai-like crossovers and soft roading style SUVs. Hence, the Korean company's decision at this model's original introduction to use a more car-like monocoque chassis for the very first time. Now, it's still enough to make this car as capable off-road as most owners will ever need it to be, with an approach angle of 22.8 degrees, a departure angle of 28.2 degrees, and a ramp angle of 18.5 degrees. It's surprising, though, that the engineers haven't fitted the kind of hill descent control system that's now quite commonplace in this segment to help your vehicle slither down steep slopes. There is a hill holder clutch, though, that'll aid you in starting off up them. All of this is pretty important because the Corando is one of the few models in this segment that the majority of buyers prefer to order with four-wheel drive. Its tarmac performance still remains crucial, though, especially if you're one of those who would really prefer the greater efficiency of the two-wheel drive version. So, how does it perform on a paved surface? Well, around the corners, it's not quite as sharp as one of the class-leading contenders in this segment, we have to say. The electric power steering seems to have been primarily geared for off-road use, which inevitably means it'll feel a little vaguer than the helms offered in more car-like rivals. Having said that, if you're not a driving enthusiast, and very few buyers of this kind of car are, then you're probably going to find this model's ride and handling balance perfectly adequate. If all you do is cruise around on half throttle anyway, why buy a car purpose designed for country lane cornering? And if you're of that mindset, then this car's six-speed automatic transmission option will probably be quite tempting, especially as the standard six-speed manual box can be a little bit notchy. This optional automatic gearbox is provided for Sangyong by the specialist company Azin. Brands like Mini and Peugeot use it too. In recent times, this transmission has been tweaked to make its shifts that bit smoother. Just one more sign of the mature all-round package the Corando can now offer. This modern era Corando wasn't only the first Sanyong to feature more car-like monocoque underpinnings, it was also the first one with styling you'd really be quite pleased to see in your driveway.
For this, the South Koreans had El Maestro, Giorgetto Giugiaro to thank, a man known as one of the great automotive stylists of his generation and responsible for designs as diverse and enduring as the DeLorean and the Fiat Panda. In the clean sculpted look this car had in its original form back in 2011, there was only evidence of the master's deft touch and the revised versions that Sanyon bought us in 2014 and 2016 didn't deviate too far from that. The later update we're looking at here goes a little further, the idea being to create a sharper, more contemporary feel. The changes made to this improved model certainly go quite a lot further than is the case with most facelifts. Up front here, the bonnet, the headlamps, the grille, the front valance and the fog lights are all completely new, as are the smart daytime running light strips around the headlamps, which feature 11 high luminescent LED lamps with separate lenses to improve visibility. In profile, things are much as before, with roof rails and pronounced wheel arches supplying the necessary SUV cues and a lower style increase, giving the flanks some shape. There are smart 16-inch alloy wheels on mainstream versions and some particularly attractive diamond-cut 18-inch rims on this flagship ELX version. We think the Corando's best angle, though, is at the rear. A slick blend of modern curves and creases set off on this revised model by a restyled lower valance. Most versions get this rear spoiler with its high-mounted LED brake light, and the whole effect is completed lower down by chrome-plated twin exhaust pipes. Take a seat at the wheel and you find yourself surrounded by the kind of sharp, angular cabin styling you'd find in a larger, pricier SUV like Hyundai Santa Fe. It's certainly obvious that Sanyong has taken note of the way its Korean competitor brands have started to make better use of aluminium look trim and soft touch plastics, and the result is a far more inviting cabin than that of earlier models. True, you might not think you're in a much more expensive sportage or cash kai, but it's certainly a world away from the Armenian thrift store feeling you get sat in a Dacia Duster, the only other car in this segment able to approach this Corando's asking price. With this revised design, the major interior change is this smarter, ergonomically designed steering wheel which gives the cabin a more contemporary feel. If you haven't tried more recent versions of this Corando, some of the upgraded infotainment technology, well, that, that might be new to you too. Provided you avoid entry-level trim, that means a center dash dominated by the Sanyong Entertainment System's informative 7-inch color touchscreen, by which you can access the usual stereo and phone functions. Now there's a link also on this screen to a rear view camera, plus you get audio streaming functionality from smart devices, along with a USB memory slot, an aux in port and an HDMI port. Go for this top ELX version and a TomTom sat-nav is also built into this setup. Getting comfortable at the wheel isn't a problem thanks to a height adjustable driver's seat and a reach and rake adjustable steering wheel through which you view two clear simple instrument dials. Plus, thank goodness, there's a proper conventional handbrake rather than one of those fiddly electric button ones. The fascia's soft touch plastics are nice to the touch. The silver and shiny black plastic inserts are quite well done and the switch gear feels solid and well conceived. True, there are lower quality plastics further down if you look for them, but then that's the case in almost any car from this category. Storage is reasonably ample with a useful central cubby beneath the ventilation controls, uh, space in front of the gear stick, uh, a pair of cup holders, and a practically sized storage box between the front seats. You also get an overhead compartment for your sunglasses and decently shaped side door pockets with recesses for bottles, as well as a large glove box. Now, whatever your feeling on the front seat ambience, you certainly can't argue with the amount of rear seat space on offer. 
This is the only car in this class, premium brand models included, able to comfortably transport three fully sized adults or a mixture of adults and teenagers on the back seat for any distance. Long journeys are helped by the fact that the seat backs recline while the seats themselves are even heated on this top variant. Rear legroom is quite plentiful, aided for the passenger in the middle of the rear seat by the fact that unlike many of its rivals, this car has no bulky transmission tunnel. Uh, centre armrest incorporates two cup holders. It's this rear seat space that could well tempt buyers of Sanyong's smaller Tivoli crossover model into this larger Corando. And the same applies when it comes to luggage room. Raising the tailgate reveals a 486 litre space that's 63 litres bigger than that of the standard Tivoli model. More importantly, perhaps, it's also significantly bigger than the capacity provided by a more comparable rival like Nissan's Qashqai, though here there's no clever dual height boot floor to help you make the most of it. This rear parcel shelf is standard across the range and you can stow it neatly in a usefully spacious underfloor boot compartment when you're not using it. The cargo floor is surrounded by shiny plastic sections that unfortunately mark up quite easily. If you need extra room, then pushing forward the 6040 split folding rear bench provides it. The rear seats folding into the floor with a satisfying thunk and freeing up a completely flat loading area that's 1,312 litres in size. So to the value proposition on offer here. This Corando is offered in one five-door, five-seat body shape, and almost all buyers choose a derivative with power coming from a 178 PS version of this Korean brand's own 2.2-litre EXDI 220 diesel engine. As for prices, well, they range up to around £23,500 if you're going for a top-spec automatic version like this one. But the important news is that you can get this Sanyong in base two-wheel drive form for as little as £17,000. And that's an eye-catching figure if you thought you couldn't afford a car of this kind. There are two trim levels on offer. In base SE spec, your Corando can be either front or four-wheel driven. There's a £1,500 premium necessary to get 4x4 traction. Sanyong sells more four-wheel drive models as a percentage of its total sales than any other brand in this segment. So it's no surprise to find that both versions of this plusher ELX variant feature all-wheel traction as standard. Choose between a manual ELX model priced at £22,000 or this automatic variant costing £1,500 more. As for the value proposition that pricing creates, well, if rightly, you see this Corando as a proper, fully-fledged, purpose-built compact SUV rather than some kind of hatchback with lifestyle-orientated off-roading looks, this Korean contender will seem very affordable indeed. This is, after all, an age where a £25,000 budget is needed for the average diesel-powered Honda CRV or Toyota RAV4. Sanyong's primary target with this car, though, is to aim at the mid-sized Qashqai class end of the growing crossover market, a segment much more focused on two-wheel drive derivatives. The brand reckons it can undercut almost everything else with comparable power in this particular sector. Indeed, it can do that and throw in four-wheel drive if you want it, while still charging you less than you pay for a more feebly powered, less well-equipped two-wheel drive rival. Now that's quite a claim, but it stacks up when you drill down into the detail. There are four really typical alternatives to a Corando in that Qashqai class segment of the market we just mentioned. First up is the design branded as either a Kia Sportage or a Hyundai Tucson and sold at this price point with a 1.7 litre diesel engine. The other popular option is a design marketed as either a Nissan Qashqai or a Renault Kajar and primarily sold in this segment with a 1.5 litre diesel. Choose any of these alternatives over a comparable two-wheel drive Corando diesel and you'll be paying an average price premium of around 23% more, which in list price terms will probably equate to around £3,500. All to get yourself a car equipped with a smaller, far less capable engine. Look at this Korean model in that light and its appeal becomes very obvious. 
In fact, this Sanyon can even undercut most much smaller crossover models, cars based on super minis and powered by even feebler diesel engines. To give you some examples here, an entry-level two-wheel drive Corando will cost you around £2,500 less than a Renault Capture DCI 110, around £3,000 less than a Vauxhall Mokka X 1.6 CDTi, and over £3,500 less than a Peugeot 2008 Blue HDI 120. Even slightly larger small crossovers like uh, Mitsubishi's ASX and Suzuki's SX4 S-Cross both cost around £21,000 in base diesel guys. In fact, the only way you could pay less than Sanyong is asking here for a car of this kind would be to go for the Renault-engineered Dacia Duster. For many, that won't be a very tempting option given that the Dacia feels cheaper inside, offers you much feebler performance on and off-road, is not much use for heavy towing and will depreciate quicker. Plus, in comparably equipped air-conditioned diesel form, it's only around £2,500 less expensive. Overall then, you'd have to agree that this Corando really does offer more for your money. But will that bargain basement pricing leave you a little short when it comes to standard equipment? Well, apparently not. Even with base SE trim you get LED daytime running lights, 16 inch alloy wheels, tinted glass, uh, electric heated power folding mirrors, uh, all round power windows, an alarm with a mobiliser and headlamp levelling. Move inside and there's air conditioning, a trip computer, cruise control and lumbar support for the driver's seat. Plus there's a six speaker MP3 compatible CD stereo with Bluetooth and iPod connectivity, a USB memory slot, an aux in port and controls on the leather trimmed steering wheel. Really practical stuff includes a heated lower front windscreen element to help you get the wipers going on a frosty day. Headlamps that stay on just long enough to light the way up to your front door. Uh, hill start assist to stop you drifting backwards on uphill junctions. And to help you at night, puddle lamps shining down below the door mirrors. Base models also get two crucial features, a rear parcel shelf and a get you home spare tire. Plus Sanyong throws in roof rails and front fog lights across the range. Opt for this flagship ELX 4x4 variant and that kit tally grows substantially. Outside you can expect to find extra chrome detailing, privacy glass, rear parking sensors, power folding mirrors, a rear spoiler with a high mounted LED stoplight and lovely 18 inch diamond cut alloy wheels. Inside you get leather seats that are electrically powered in the front and heated front and rear, plus there's automatic climate control. A significant infotainment upgrade at this level gives you a 7-inch high-definition colour touchscreen featuring TomTom Tom satellite navigation, a rear-view camera, audio streaming for smart devices and the usual audio and phone functions. Only a DAB tuner is notable by its absence, though you can add that as a dealer fit extra. Whichever Corando variant you choose, the main option is metallic paint and many buyers of the four-wheel drive versions will want a tow bar. There are also various roof rack systems, a, a cycle carrier and a protection mat for the load area. We'd also want to pay extra for a full-size spare wheel, an important feature to have on any kind of SUV. Safety-wise, you can expect to find twin front side and curtain airbags, anti-whiplash head restraints, tyre pressure monitoring and Isofix child seat fastenings on the outer rear seats. To try and make sure that you'll never have to use any of this stuff, there are the usual electronic driving aids. So ABS braking with EBD electronic brake force distribution to make it more effective. Uh, panic stops will be advertised to following motorists via an emergency stop signal that flashes the rear lights when you slam on the anchors. Plus there's an ESP stability control system with ARP active rollover protection. Sanyong has made significant strides in terms of running cost efficiency since this Corando was first launched, primarily with the introduction of a 2.2 litre EXDI220 D22T diesel engine in 2016. 
Though this unit is much more powerful than its two-litre predecessor, it's significantly more economic. Expect the two-wheel drive model to deliver 53.3 miles to the gallon on the combined cycle and 139 grams per kilometre of CO2. With the four-wheel drive variant, the figures are 48.7 miles to the gallon and 152 grams per kilometre. Go for this top six-speed automatic derivative and the figures are 40.9 miles to the gallon and 179 grams per kilometre. It's at this point that usually I'd try and give you some perspective as to how this showing uh, matches up against the competition, but Sanyong's value pricing makes that rather difficult to do. The kind of compact SUV and family size crossover class models you could buy for Corando money are certainly more affordable to run, but then that's because they come with much feebler, smaller power plants that of course are more economic. Ultimately, it really comes down to what you want. What else? Well, service intervals are every year or 12,500 miles. Uh, insurance is rated at Group 24D for the entry-level SE two-wheel drive version and Group 26D for this top ELX 4x4 variant. On all other models, you'll be looking at a Group 25D rating. Residual values are far more impressive than you might expect them to be. After the usual three-year, 30,000-mile ownership period, uh, this car should hang on to between 41 and 43% of its original value, depending on the variant you choose. Perhaps the best bit, though, is the peace of mind that comes as standard with this car, thanks to this Korean brand's impressively complete, class-leading, five-year, limitless mileage warranty. Limitless means a lack of the kind of irritating maximum mileage condition that many other brands impose in their small print. As you'd expect, the Sanyong cover deals with all the major mechanical components, including uh, wheel bearings, uh, suspension joints and bushes, uh, steering joints, shock absorbers, and even the audio system. Wearable components such as clutch discs and brake friction materials that could have their life reduced by poor driving are covered for one year or 12,000 miles, while the battery and the paintwork are covered for three years. Career can do. That's apparently what the word Corando means, and it seems appropriate. After all, it's hard to think of a car maker that has come so far so quickly as Sanyong. This Corando is one of the most accessible models the company makes and feels even more class competitive in this further improved guise. Yes, as the brand itself would admit, this remains a work in progress, but the signs with this car are that this Korean mark is learning quickly just what European customers really want. Already, when it comes to things like pulling power, rear passenger space, and sheer value for money, this Corando can take on, and in many cases, beat the best of its rivals in the crossover and compact SUV sectors. It's better off-road than most of them, too. Now, elsewhere, you might read that this car could be a little sharper to drive, the running cost efficiency could be better, and the interior quality a touch more upmarket. In principle, we wouldn't necessarily argue with those comments, but we'd also qualify them by pointing out that they reference comparisons with far less capable rivals. It's easy to make your product better in all of these areas when it doesn't need to be very good off-road and you're selling it for an overinflated price. So, how to summarise? Well, we'd say that this Sanyong is a difficult option to ignore if you need a really capable car of this kind. It can powerfully tow, will more comfortably transport five people than direct rivals, and offers up plenty of kit on a tight budget. You just have to get used to explaining to people what it is. And who knows, you might even end up suggesting that they try one. <laughs>